the AI for me became an obsession around 2011 when IBM Watson won on Jeopardy. And I had no clue how it worked. But I looked at it and said, that's really fascinating. Like, we build marketing strategy for a living. We try to answer questions. We try to find paths to achieve something. What if whatever Watson is, is could be applied to marketing? What would happen? And so I started just reading everything I could find about artificial intelligence, trying to comprehend what exactly is it, what makes it work, where is it being used now. And so that led to years later, we created the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Institute in November of 16. And since then, we've been researching and writing about AI. We've written 200, 250 articles about AI, and I've done probably north of 50 talks on AI. It's pretty much all I do now. I still run an agency by day, um, but really, they kind of run the agency, and I do talks about AI. So uh, the best analogy I've found to explain artificial intelligence is maps. So many of you have probably used an atlas in your life. I, I like to say, like my, um, when I was in high school, my mom opened a cookie store. And I would do deliveries for her on weekends and holidays. And I still sometimes do them on holidays. And so I would get in in the morning, and there would be 15 deliveries. And I would literally pull out an atlas, and I would highlight the paths through those 15 deliveries. This is marketing software today. You are given a tool to figure out how to go from point A to point B, and you figure out the path. The tool is great. Like, they're really valuable. They drive efficiencies. They do these things. But they don't actually do anything for you. Humans wrote the code to build the software. You write the algorithms or the sets of instructions that tell the software what to do. You figure out how to go from point A to point B. Every single piece of marketing software you have ever used, that's how it works. That's where we're at today. In the world of transportation, Google Maps showed up at some point. Now you put in a destination, and it tells you how long it'll take to get from point A to point B. It'll recommend alternate paths that may take less time. It may even recommend you take a train instead of the bus because the train's going to be 20 minutes faster. Then as you're tra transporting from point A to point B, one, you can add another destination along the way, and it'll alter your path. Um, two, it may recognize that something has happened up ahead, an accident occurred, and it'll redirect your path around that obstacle. You as the human have overwrite capability through this entire process. You still decide, are you going to stay on path A? Are you going to stay in this mode of transportation? Are you going to follow the recommendation to try something different, to go a different path? This is the very near future of marketing software. Most AI-powered marketing software still is nowhere near the capabilities of a Google Maps. But this is the near future, is recommendations of ways to improve what we do, from picking keywords to when to send emails to how to structure your content strategy. This is what most marketing software solutions are trying to build, is some variation of this recommendation based on predictions of how to achieve what you're setting out to do. At a high level, that's really all we're talking about. Now, the stuff that people get overwhelmed by is what comes next in transportation, which is full autonomy. So if you've ever seen a Tesla or heard of Tesla autopilot or autonomous vehicles, this is how it works. The only reason the human's in this car is for legal purposes. They put go to point B, and it's now driving itself. But what's happening is they're using something called computer vision. The green boxes are in-path objects. The blue are non-in-path objects. So they're objects that are there, but they're not affecting anything. A machine has no idea how to see something. It doesn't know if a person from a telephone pole. Machines are dumb. Artificial intelligence is trying to teach a machine to see and think like a human. It's insanely difficult to do. So the way Tesla has done this is they, they're actually modeling. Every trip that's taken in a Tesla, there's an AI model running behind the scenes learning how the human does something. And it learns how to recognize and maneuvers to take based on the human. And so the day when they make autonomous driving happen, it's going to be because they've run billions of miles of training of a human teaching the machine how to do these things. So 
as content marketers, when we think about what's the future, well, we're, we're using automation tools, we're using content calendars, we're scheduling content, we're picking keywords, like we're doing all these things we do every day, and we can envision kind of incremental steps forward. Like, wow, if I go buy this piece of software, it'll be a little bit more efficient, efficient. I'll save five hours a month. Because as humans, we can only think in a linear path. We can only think based on what's capable today and the things we understand. The reality is this is the future. It's exponential. The, there will be leaps forward that today are hard to even comprehend. Uh, and when they happen, it'll make a ton of sense, but right now it's hard to look out ahead. So for example, like the previous session Val was talking about, will we all, will we, we all be out of jobs? No, um, but there will be major transformations that happen in marketing that'll change the way we do things. So I'm gonna bring it back to our main mission with the Institute is to make AI approachable and actual. It's to make this stuff make sense where people aren't overwhelmed by it, but they actually look at it as a way to drive their organization forward. So the change you've experienced in the last 10 years, like if you think about what the iPhone has done and all the different changes in social networks and all the different changes in the technology we use, that's, it's child's play compared to the next 10 years. And, and that's not an overstatement. This is a quote from the CEO of Google. AI is one of the most important things that humanity is working on. It's more profound than, I don't know, electricity or fire. That also is not an overstatement. When you understand the implications of what's gonna happen, which I'm gonna try and give you a general sense of today, you'll realize that what it'll do to business, what it'll do to society, and then in the trickle-down effect, what it'll do to content marketing is massive. So our working premise as an agency, because again, I kind of run the agency by day, is 80% of what we do, and we are largely content strategists and producers. It's, it's the majority of what we do. Um, we'll be intelligently automated to some degree within the next three to five years. And I'll walk you through use cases, like exact examples of what those things are in a minute. But this is the premise we're under. And so a lot of the research we're doing and the writing we're doing is trying to find out what the near-term future looks like so that we can adapt as an organization and guide other organizations along the same path. Gartner forecasts AI-derived business value will reach 3.9 trillion annually by 2022. And you can see the growth percentage. I actually, my uneducated opinion is uh, it's wrong. It, it'll actually um, potentially accelerate be, way beyond what they're predicting there. But what they're looking at is three main categories, and this is it. So that 3.9 trillion is coming from these three categories alone. Customer experience, which they consider retention and growth of existing clients based on the experience they have with you. So you can think about like personalization and um, user experience and like things that just make people happier and make them spend more money. Um, cost reduction, so driving efficiencies using artificial intelligence. And then new revenue is using artificial intelligence to identify new opportunities for products and services and ways to sell those. So 3.9 trillion recognized value within five years four years. McKinsey Global Institute, theirs gets up to six trillion annually. And again, they're looking at kind of a small scope of, of areas, but there's a six. So pricing and promotion is the biggest. If you can optimize pricing at an individual level, you can maximize value creation. Promotion is kind of a lump of marketing, basically. Customer service, next product to buy, meaning recommending products and services. Uh, customer acquisition, lead generation, budget allocation, churn reduction, and channel management. So it just gives you a sense that this isn't 10 years from now it's going to change stuff. This is now, and it's massive. So what is it? The best way I've figured out to explain AI is it, AI is the umbrella term. It's this collection of tools and technologies and algorithms that are designed to make machines smart. Machines, again, are dumb. So that you teach them to do these things. The primary category, and there will not be a quiz on terminology after this, and you don't actually have to really comprehend this te terminology right now, and I'm not gonna overwhelm you with them, but just so you, when you go back to the exhibit hall and people are like, yeah, we use machine learning to do this thing, and it's awesome, and it's really smart, you can at least now have like a base level of what the heck they're talking about and what that means. So machine learning, is almost exclusively about, about making predictions based on historical data. So machine learning takes in data, the more data it has, the better, the more structured that data is, the better. Um, 
the more computational power you have to use that data, the better. But in essence, it makes predictions. So it classifies things like, yes, this is a good lead. No, this is not a good lead. Yes, this is a good article to write, a good headline. No, it's not. And then it does other things like regression. But basically, it's making predictions. So that's largely what it's used for. We'll go through examples of the kinds of predictions you can make. And then deep learning is basically giving it human-like capability. So if anyone was in Val's session, she was going pretty deep on this concept. Um, this is things like natural language generation, natural language processing, like Acrolinks, I know is you know, in the room. That's what they're doing. They like take language in, understand it. Because again, the machine doesn't understand human language. It doesn't understand anything. It's taught to do this. Um, computer vision, image recognition. So these are just some of the terms you'll hear. And by the end of this, I hope you'll understand better what they are. The key thing is whether or not something is truly artificial intelligence, is the machine getting smarter on its own? So in that example of Google Maps, every time someone changes a path or follows a direction, like the machine's learning what the human did. There's no human back there coding Google Maps saying, turn left here. So it learns. Um, if you've ever seen, like on Netflix, when you choose a show, like it recommends a show to you and you pick it, it learned that that was a good recommendation for someone like you and it makes it better moving forward. So machines are, if they're always learning and advancing themselves, that's true artificial intelligence. If you're in a software product that gives you recommendations and those recommendations are universal to every user of that software, like send the email at 3 p.m. on Tuesday because someone did a research project three years ago that that was a good time, and you go in and you set it and it says, hey, send them on 3 p.m. on Tuesday, and it's not customized to you or customized to an individual, and it's only changed when a data scientist does a new study and changes it, that's not artificial intelligence. It's just a, it's just a rule written by a human. So if you think about your life every day, like this is my home screen. Every one of these, I actually manipulated this to show a bunch of AI-powered ones, but every one of these is, is completely infused with artificial intelligence. So Facebook, like what you read in your news feed, is based largely on their algorithms. And facial recognition would fit under there. Um, Twitter, when you go into the home page, I don't know if anybody's noticed this in the last year, Twitter's home page sucked. Like it used to be completely irrelevant. You would go in and it forced you into this home thing you didn't want to look at anyway, but now it's actually pretty good. And the people in there are people I actually want to see stuff from, and it's content I actually want to read. Well, it learned, and they made it smarter. That's the kind of thing you start thinking about your websites and the content you present to people and the recommended eBooks you make and the blog post to write next. It's just predictions. Like you're trying to predict what will be of value to someone and then recommend that thing to them at the right time. So all of these, like Nest cameras uses facial recognition, Netflix recommends stuff, Alexa obviously voice recognition. Machines don't understand human voice, they've been taught to. And then responding to you is natural language generation. Like all of these things are human capabilities that were given to the machine. So here's a real practical one for content marketers. So has anybody ever used in the Gmail that little smart reply at the bottom where it like recommends three to five word responses? So this is uh, the, a product called Smart Replies, and there's a team of, of dozens of engineers working on this. So this was last year technology. But what was happening is you were training. Every single one of us has been training their algorithms how to pre, pre, uh, create human language. So it's using natural language processing to read your email and understand everything in it. Every email you've ever sent and received has been read by their systems, and they classify and categorize that content. And then they predict what your response is going to be. And when you choose one of those and use it, you've trained the machine that was good. And it, it learns and it gets better. And all of a sudden, it's getting really good at predicting what you want to respond. But that was just the start. Now we have something called Smart Compose, which is in your Gmail. And if you don't have it yet, you will in the near future. So on your desktop, you type Taco Tuesday. It starts predicting what you want to say to this person about tacos. So you bring chips and salsa, I'll make the guacamole. Let's get together soon for tacos. Um, so it's, it's doing, you know, here's the chips and salsa and guacamole one. Um, it recommends times, it recommends dates. So again, it has all the context in the world of your conversations. And it could actually go back and look at every email you've ever had with this person and understand the context of those. It's it, almost infinite its ability to learn and retain information. So there's no limit, really, to what it's capable of eventually creating. There, the next one is this will actually be in Google Docs, and their goal is to finish paragraphs for you. So you'll start writing sentences, and it'll know everything you've ever written. It'll understand your tone and your style, and it's learning to create human language. 
Um, a wildly difficult thing to do, but again, it's Google, and there are no limits really to what resources they can put to it and the brain power they can dedicate to it, and they're very focused on achieving that. So that's in the very near future. I mean, I think within three years, you'll, within Google Docs, if not a lot sooner, it'll start finishing paragraphs for you. Thank <music> you.